buenas tardes. Eh, bueno, pues vamos a hablar de, de geobiología, vamos a hablar de, de los campos geofísicos en, en el mundo, en el ambiente natural y de cómo, de cómo estos pueden afectar a la salud de, de las personas por largos periodos de exposición a ellos. Eh, el recorrido de esta, de esta ciencia eh, agrupamos ahí también contaminantes químicos, eh, campos electromagnéticos artificiales, etc. Pero en un principio, muy ancestralmente, es algo que, que nos lleva acompañando, que, 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 que está con nosotros desde hace, desde hace miles de años. ¿no? O sea, eh, antiguamente de forma ancestral, eh, todas las tradiciones han tenido un lugar, una, una forma para, para escoger un lugar adecuado para la salud de, en su vida. ¿no? Ya desde, desde tiempos remotos, como en época de, de, de Augusto, eh, Vitruvio ya recogía en sus diez libros de arquitectura cómo el... En el texto, wrote how to select the best place to live in order to build your own home. And, uh to the environmental processes uh, so that uh, no diseases could be developed. We also have some anecdotes uh, from Indians, American Indians, say when they placed uh, their tent, they were always looking for the best uh, place so that the animals, particularly dogs, would be next to them and could coexist there so that the animal could be able to recognize whether the environment was a healthy one but we've had some evolutions in more recent periods you can see uh, what has been called geobiology uh, geo, uh, And uh, it has been described in some text, uh, such as the Newford uh, publication. We can see in the first edition, 1936, where you have the different elements which we will see later on, such as uh, underground and uh, uh, waters, etc., and electromagnetic fields which can have an impact on your own environment. ¿Dónde se desarrolla realmente todo este tipo de cosas? Todo este tipo de cosas se desarrolla... So, this is the universe. The universe, which at a given time is being generated by an enormous amount of electromagnetic fields and different forces, which will be the players in that type of environment. Uh, to the forces, they are based on the rules, Uh, which include all the structure of the universe as we know it today, the fundamental forces, which are the strong and weak forces with atoms, which represent the atomic structure. And it allows, I mean, to uh, the linkage uh, with the strong force, and the other ones work on the radioactive uh, uh, relationship of the atoms. And we have gravity, which uh, allows to be really on, on the ground and to live at a given place. And then we have these uh, force which are mostly interested right now, which is the electromagnetic force. The electromagnetic force has got an interaction with atoms, with the orbital and the nuclei, and which will allow the connection between atoms, different atoms, which will generate molecules, such as the one you can see on the drawing, the hydrogen and oxygen, which is the first uh, living molecule, thanks to the electromagnetic integration of atoms. And of course, the evolution as to the electric magnetic force has been based on more complex events. I mean, the construction of molecules uh, apart from the uh, water molecule. And uh, we have the basic uh, uh, electromagnetic axe, which orders the uh, matter and life as we know it today. 
the electromagnetic force is, made, is composed of photons, which is a vibration. In fact, it's an energy. It's an application of an energy. And this energy can be a slow one, can be a rapid one, and this will uh, give rise to the different expressions of that electromagnetic force. These different expressions will be the visible light, but also heat, infrared, and X-ray, gamma ray, microwaves, which we use when we are using our mobile phone, for instance. So everything which really is made up of, uh, makes up light and which is being expressed by the photon energy. And it is what we call the electromagnetic force. Now, these forces which interact with everything, let's see it a bit uh, uh, further. We can see that they make a part of our own environment. The first electromagnetic source, an enormous one, which we have next to us will be the sun, which generates light on a constant basis, as well as a lot of radiations at different frequencies which reach our planet. And then our planet, in turn, has got its own electromagnetic field, which is the one you can see in blue, and which is a kind of shield which allows us to be protected against an excess uh, amount of radiations coming from the sun. Then the small spot which we have here is the Earth, our planet. And around it, you can see the electromagnetic distorted field due to the effect of solar wind. So we see that there is already an interaction between the cosmos and our own planet. If this field uh, didn't exist, I mean, we will see what happens with Mars, for instance. Uh, the solar wind uh, will uh, drives and moves all uh, uh, different uh, seas, movements, flood, etc. So then, once we are here on the Earth, to say, we are exposed to uh, solar energy and solar radiation. And we have an important factor such as a, a UV uh, reactions, a visible light, so we can see the infrared light and the other visible uh, uh, photosynthesis. So, of course, without it, we wouldn't have any life in Earth. Now, the uh, geomagnetic field of the sun, which protects it against an excess in solar uh, radiation, as uh, we cannot live without the uh, existence of such a field, uh, the astronauts are still suffering this electromagnetic uh, field expression, so we don't know exactly what are the effects on health if this field is not present. Uh, recently, in some uh, surveys been made by Russians on rats and mice, uh, it would seem that the uh, uh, mice will lose attention, memory, etc., without that type of radiation. So it has a direct impact on our health, I mean, this uh, electromagnetic field. Then we also have the uh, solar storms, electric storms, which allows a rebalancing of uh, environmental uh, electricity. The sky, so to say, will be a positive uh, 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 charge. And uh, the correction of these imbalances is made up thanks to the electric uh, uh, discharged. And this gives rise to a kind of movement, a kind of uh, uh, expression of the relationship between the sun, the sky, sorry, and the earth. Now we have the Schumann resonance, which is a kind of pace or rhythm in our planet. It is a well-determined uh, movement between 7.8 hertz per second, roughly. And thanks to the fact that the Earth has got a specific diameter, and uh, there is a distance between the Earth and uh, the uh, high ionosphere, and it creates such as a resonating, really, uh, type of instrument. 
with a determined type of diameter and being moved and uh, uh, really uh, moved thanks to these different movements, it gives rise to a rhythm which is a very special one, which is a special one for the Earth. And this is where we are within um, all these music or uh, big songs, so to say, which are the electromagnetic uh, pulses. You can see here some uh, uh, representations with sand on a kind of a rubber uh, carpet. You can see these geometric uh, uh, representations, which are wonderful. And this is the result of a kind of uh, music at a specific frequency, and it gives rise to a specific sh uh, shape. And uh, ma I mean, it's called music of movements, a music which determines a specific movement. Now, this movement, of course, corresponds to the cycles in which we all live in. I mean, the electromagnetic uh, uh, natural uh, movement which will mark up the difference between night and day, etc. Biological processes which are being developed based on these uh, uh, different changes. And there is something which connects us with it. I mean, right in the center, you get the pineal gland, which allows us to be connected with that electromagnetic universe. It is electrosensitive, magnetosensitive, and light sensitive as well. So, we can say that meanwhile we have a solar radiation during the day, this uh, induces us to activity, uh, to work, etc. And at night, with the absence of that solar radiation, then we've got uh, serotonin and melatonin first, we feel asleep. And then it is also a precursor of the immune system. And at the same time, it will reconstruct uh, the cell aging process. It will reconstruct the uh, uh, cell tissues with all these uh, free radicals. Now, these uh, day and night uh, uh, rhythms can be reproduced in a, a, a living organism through an uh, ECG, for instance. We can see how these rhythms are being repeated. We have uh, heard about the Schumann uh, uh, way before. Now we have the harmonics, which is right, practically at the same frequency as the one which we have in our brain. The alpha function, for instance, which is at eight Earths, roughly, is the one which we have mostly when we are about to rest, or we are resting. So we feel at ease, really. We are relaxed. And in other moments, for instance, we can reach 40 Hertz. So it means that there is a correlation with these different rhythms, the biological differences, which are related with the uh, frequencies in our surroundings. Apart from the rhythm, we also have the movement, uh, the way of moving and the uh, movements uh, of the things around us, which are based on the shapes being generated by the links, electromagnetic links, which allows the creation of molecules between the different atoms. It is the adequate uh, makeup and distribution of these atoms, which we can see now. And this also shows us the different paths or ways forward, uh, where particularly we have it with uh, sharks and etc. Uh, following the electromagnetic lines on the sea. Uh, the birds as well, with migrations, uh, do follow the same rhythm. And uh, based on the different, uh, uh, really, uh, four periods along the year, I mean, they will follow one uh, way or another, one line or another. So from the northern part of America up to Canada and down to the south, uh, all based on electromagnetic lines. Then we also have another reference based on uh, other types of animals who do not travel right now. But in one way or another, they've got a geomagnetic references uh, 
uh, Sabine Begal has carried out a survey, and we can see that uh, cows, etc., and buffaloes could be oriented, uh, I mean, uh, and, uh, no, either north or south. I mean, all these mammals with a predominance of cold, shadow, comfort, etc. So it was a geomagnetic uh, factor as well. And what about us? We've got a uh, factor of orientation as well. We don't remind it. I mean, we don't know how to use it, but it does exist. We have mechanisms which are magnetosensitive. Now, in 1992, Kirswick discovered that we had about 5 million per gram of uh, brain tissue made up of uh, magnetite biomineralization in our brain. So we can also see them with an electronic microscope. We have millions and millions of uh, n uh, nanostructures in the frontal system, for instance, in the brain and in our joints as well. We have made, met a lot of people that due to a lack of orientation uh, from the electromagnetic viewpoint, they will uh, be suffering from the variation of these electromagnetic fields and they will fill it in their joints. Now, from uh, Kyochi Nakagawa, for instance, uh, we have an explanation of a syndrome which he defines as a deficiency syndrome as to the magnetic field. It is a syndrome which is quite similar to all the effects which have been uh, really uh, d described in uh, the previous literature. Now, what about the interfering elements? We have been uh, describing, I mean, the type of describing the type of life which you can have with these different fields, which seems to be perfect. But of course, in any way, there is something which disturbs something which is supposed to be perfect. And the main element which can affect these rhythms are the rhythms which we are creating ourselves. Well, I will not speak too much about the artificial electromagnetic pollution because we'll have a presentation about the same subject. But we have digital signals and the square uh, wave, I mean, from zero to something uh, exponentially, I mean, uh, it seems, seems to be something abnormal. The square type wave do, do not exist in nature. We can get waves at the same frequency or the same intensity, but we we'll never receive them with that type of uh, shape, so to say. Now, we also have the sources of these different signals, electromagnetic uh, pollution, I mean, uh, any type of uh, mobile, uh, uh, telecom, uh, devices, uh, Wi-Fi, etc., 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 wireless phones, etc. We have more and more examples of it right now in the market. Now let's try to define the natural geopathogenic areas, the natural environment. What are the elements which can be uh, acting against our own health in a very specific way? Now, what could alter uh, this environment? Well, let's look at the geology of different sites and places which are made up of different materials. We can have uh, cracks, some geological elements, which will break down, so to say, the frequency, the harmonious frequency which we should find on the surface. And this will we create a, a drop in intensity or noises uh, through these different radiations. Now, what do we find? Basically, the uh, water, really, basin, uh, large masses of water, which can generate uh, movement under the surface. When we have uh, circulating waters being uh, localized, we will see variations in the field in the surface. There, of course, in a natural way, we can have some uh, fractures and change to the mineral composition. And all these elements can give rise to a different uh, uh, electrical field and different radiations through the cracks. 
and you have localized uh, sites and points which can be uh, uh, geopathogenic, could give rise to uh, uh, pathology. Now, what uh, can we say about these uh, elements? They will vary the electrical conductivity of the terrain. Now, you can see some examples of it electrical uh, modifications, and now within a home, not in the field. Now, the electric uh, uh, conductivity, I mean, can, can give rise to different current density gradients, and it uh, happens in the oceans and uh, on the Earth as well. These uh, field variations, can give rise to magnetic fields which can vary and which will change the geomagnetism on the surface. That is a study which has been carried out by Tomorani and Yomoda and Toshio Yoshida. So it's a study which could uh, uh, help uh, preventing earthquakes, among other things. Now, this is a measurement of a plot. You can see the differences on the same plot as to the conductivity and variations such as the intensity of magnetic field. You can see a big difference here. So it no, couldn't be a good place just to have your own bed. Yeah. Now the radioactivity levels and variations according to the different materials. This is another illustration of it. This is another uh, research in which you can see the geology and radioactivity emissions. And there is something else which we are considering right now, the uh, ferromagnetic structures. Last week, I've been in Mallorca doing some measurements for a uh, uh, Person was an old. It's an old house from the uh, year 1800, and another one in the newly constructed uh, structure. In the modern uh, structure, all installations were pre-manufactured elements. The magnetic field was uh, about 32,000 uh, as a unit, and a 20 centimeters variation of. Mm, more than 70,000, whereas in the other old house, due to the different construction materials, there was no factor of distortion. The fields were the same as uh, the field around uh, the house. So the constructive materials are starting to create problems nowadays. Now, there's another element which can uh, uh, represent a distortion in these magnetic fields, are uh, the ferromagnetic elements. Uh, and uh, some persons would uh, uh, sleep on a kind of metallic type of uh, mattress, for instance. I mean, will suffer some modifications. If you are uh, having a north-south orientation, there is a cha change of about 100 or 90 degree de uh, degrees change in the magnetic field. So this is a curve in which you can see that uh, you look at the north in that direction and look at the uh, result. Now, there's another uh, important element, the geophysic alterations. Dr. Perret, 1947, speak about the cosmotelluric radiations. And this is a representation. This is a magnetic field. Uh, um, a fluoromagnetic uh, fluid, and just as a real uh, magnetic field. And this is what we could see normally in uh, textbooks, and it's on um, this representation of the Earth in the upper part of this slide. Now, when uh, it uh, gains a kind of uh, the, the Earth, you will uh, find what we have a kind of mesh distribution, and Dr. Hartmann has described it in Germany as a really a, a kind of a physical alteration, a kind of disease, and then it has been described by other scientists. Now you can see other variation in the electric field at low frequency with uh, crossing uh, sections from compared with Dr. Hartman. This, is, this study has been carried out in a 
private home. Now, about the geopathogenic uh, areas, does it affect on health? These are the effort tests in which we have seen as our person being exposed to a field variation could have a, a loss of about three kilos as to the cinetics variation and when that person goes through a, a kind of neutral environment you will have a rebalancing so in that case you can have a load of about 13 kilos according to its own physical strength but with that type of test you can see the difference of being in a neutral or non-neutral area would be about three kilos difference as to the resistance so you are losing a kind of muscle tonus now about the geo uh, rhythmogram which has been studied as well by Dr. Hartman, we can see that the the person, when you press on the probe, it will give rise to some uh, charts which will tell you whether you are in a neutral area or not. As to the exposition, I mean, we can have very local uh, exposition, which will have an impact on a joint or, or a specific organ. And you can also have a person who suffers from a kind of, uh, really a mesh or a kind of networking of different forces. But about the disorders which we can get in each of these cases, you can have, uh, well, uh, really sleep problems, uh, uh, you suffer from a chronic fatigue, uh, really a lot of uh, uh, tr uh, even pain, I would say, after a specific effort, uh, headaches, uh, muscle pain, joint pain, etc., bruxism, etc. So, and uh, these phenomena will uh, go on increasing with time. Now, the syndrome of magnetic field deficiency, it has been described by Nakagawa, and this is uh, what has been described uh, when they are referring to a genopathogenic area. Now, then we have the short-term effects in which the main symptom will be to feel tired right from the beginning, just after sleep. And... Uh, particularly when we sleep outside our own home, I mean, away from our home. And uh, right from the very first night, we can sleep perhaps better. So we have a memory of a similar situation, and we also remind places where we have slept perfectly well. The mid-term effects. Now, I mean... Uh, uh, for that type of symptoms, the problems will persist uh, in spite of any medical intervention. Uh, uh, well, the person cannot find the right answer, really. And the long-term effects, so we can have uh, chronic or generalized uh, health problems, endogenous depression, uh, degenerative uh, status, etc., which has to do with uh, mostly a lot with the artificial electromagnetic fields. Now, this is uh, a specific case which corresponds to a research, a piece of research which we have been doing. Now, the person who was sleeping in that direction, uh, it was during the first phase, just a sleep uh, uh, disorders. It was a harm and uh, uh, phenomenon here. This person couldn't sleep well at night, so she decided to change uh, from one bed to another, but sleeping and the other part with the other in the other direction. So there was an extra a bed in the room next door. So this person has been uh, sleeping here in that direction. And in, uh, based on intuition, this person was feeling much better. And after the study, we have even been able to uh, improve the quality of uh, 
uh, her sleep. Now, this person was sleeping now in that direction. This one couldn't rest correctly at uh, night with a lot of disorders. It was This corresponded to the first phase of exposition to electromagnetic fields. And after our research, we changed her position. And that person started to sleep correctly. So, well, we couldn't move more beds really in doing that in that flat, which was not a big one. Then that person got married, and uh, his wife started to decided to uh, change the position of the bed, etc. And this person, after some while, some time, uh, suffered exactly the same phenomenon as her husband. So they decided to change the whole distribution of the flat. Now this girl, little girl, was uh, sleeping here with an electromagnetic uh, field structure. And uh, she was not relaxing at night, etc. So we decided to change the position of the bed. And from the very first night, the child started to sleep correctly. Now this is another uh, situation which corresponds to the first phase, the impact on a knee. This lady was, uh, there was a Harvard's cross section here, just on the knee. We changed the position and this person has no longer uh, really uh, inflammation or joint disorders since then. So this is a chronic phase here. Uh, the person has been suffering much more than the previous ones. There is a degenerative disorders being uh, located on the knee, left knee. In that case, we have changed the position, the orientation of the bed. And what we had, uh, with them, of course, uh, we haven't been able to cure the patient, but today there's not so many symptoms. Uh, she's a teacher, she has to teach, and uh, really she couldn't really uh, relax, she couldn't really uh, stand still and in that position. Now this is another case. Chronica. Here we have a chronic phase where the person is exposed to a current of underground water. She's also exposed to a Harman's cross in the genital area. This person suffered from significant uh, stress. She couldn't sleep. She had uh, lots of dysfunctions associated to, drink, to sleeping over a current of water, but this also generated an ovarian cyst. So we looked for an area that was not altered and the recovery has been fantastic. Uh, her husband couldn't sleep either, but nowadays both of them rest, can rest very well. This is another case of a gentleman, gentleman, gentleman also exposed to certain alterations and this morning uh, I was talking to him and he told me that he was sleeping very well and his health improved a lot after a year of not sleeping at all. Uh, the beginning, since he couldn't sleep in his room, which was this room here, this was the master room, intuitively he came to this other area. It was not the most... Uh, and uh, we found him a new house, which is where he's living now and he's doing very well. This other study is is a, a woman who suffers from degenerative disease, autoimmune degenerative syndrome, and they live in a, a terraced house. And this is where she was sleeping. Her husband couldn't sleep, but he was not affected very much. The woman couldn't sleep very well, She, but at the same time, she mm, suffered from a disorder from the autoimmune disorder. What we did was to change her room and nowadays uh, the symptoms really, well, practically disappeared and all of the processes she had, she suffered from, went back to normal. Here we have a case that happened in a large vertical. We have a three-story building. Uh, 
that this was a three-story building where the people sleeping on this side suffered from a series of severe uh, diseases in the neck and the head. Uh, when we performed the measurement, the person sleeping on that side had died. And the wife, uh, when she became widowed, she started sleeping on the other side too, and she started developing a degenerative disease in uh, the throat. And her neighbors on that side were also affected with severe diseases. This is one of my favorites. It's a person we were making some measurements in Alicante. She suffered from a chronic fatigue syndrome. She lost hair, a lot of hair. And uh, he was sleeping on an altered area with a hymen cross in the genitals and a very significant network passing through the whole of his body. We just changed the room to this other area and this person has recovered his hair and she's very happy to, and she found us to thank us for the work we did there and now they're thinking of having a baby which is something they couldn't do in the past. Conclusions. Well, it's important to avoid being exposed to this type of element, since uh, we don't know them naturally, it would be good to phone an expert who could perform some kind of measurement. And in this way we might be able to assess the um, status of our home and analyze what elements may be affecting us. This is what just one more habit. So we eat, we pay attention to the quality of the air we breathe, we take exercise. So, um, and this is an aspect we tend to forget about. The place where we live, the place where we rest. And this should be something we considered more carefully. Thank you very much for your attention.